So you've been hearing about this Claude code lately, or maybe you even went out and got an Anthropic subscription for 20 bucks, and you're using Claude code a little bit, and you wonder, should I pay 200 bucks? Is it worth it? Today, we're definitely going to find out. Oh man, did the vibes go bad. Oh good gosh, how far did these things get? This is amazing. Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what is going on, Claude? I'm going to throw the same request, the same PRD, at both Opus and Sonnet. That's the differentiation between the $20 plan and either one of the max plans. And we're going to see if there's an actual difference between the output on these and whether or not it's immediately needed that you upgrade from 20 bucks to $200, or maybe you don't need to, or exactly when you should. Those are all the questions that we're going to look into today. Let's dive in. This is just kind of an experimentation project today. Let's go have some fun. Okay, I love these kinds of things. I hope you do too. This is just me running some experiments in two different modes. So on the left, we have Opus, and on the right, we have Sonnet. I have pre-filled the project a little bit, so I've got Next.js installed and ShadCN just so that they could be kicked off appropriately. What I've done is I've worked with O3 in ChatGPT to try to get a very explicit PRD, which is a requirements document. I also have a design doc, which gives a very brief idea of what we're trying to build. I will go into each one of these and make sure that this one is set to Opus and this one is set to Sonnet so that we lock them down. And lastly, what I will show you is the design doc themselves. So what I've done is I've broken it into two parts. We'll do phase one and it will hopefully build a bit of the architecture. And then the second one over here, it's got the same top, but then it has the intelligent variants. So how do we use LLMs and that kind of information to enhance what we're building? And so I wanted to say, okay, if I only had the $20 plan, what kind of outcome do I have with the same starting point? If I have an expensive plan, what kind of outcome do I have? That's basically what we're running. Frankly, I did this yesterday and both of them fell on their face. So I gave these two phases that you just saw me describe, I gave them both at the same time and I didn't give any of the technical details. I let them do the planning. I thought, well, if you do have one or the other, maybe the technical plan is also something that we want to evaluate. And the problem was they both went in kind of very different directions and fell on their face for different reasons, and it became really difficult to evaluate. Okay, if we look at the Anthropic docs, really what I want to point out is just a few simple things, is they say Claude 4 Opus delivers sustained performance on long-running tasks that require focused efforts and thousands of steps with the ability to work continuously for several hours, and it dramatically uh, outperforms all the other Sonnet models. Okay, I got them both started, and then I pulled up the browser. So remembering this is Opus over here. Opus does run excellent, so this already looks pretty good. On this side, I have a single error. I am not gonna fault anything for having a single error, so let's collapse that and give it that error and give it a chance to fix it. If I was asking whether or not I needed to spend 10 times more money to get a subscription so that I could do the same kind of work, I'm willing to fix one bug. And it turns out I fixed, I just pasted that one bug in and it did fix it. At least it got it to this point. Now, admittedly, we don't think this project is done yet. So I don't want to go too far, but this is fantastic. Just seeing this, by the way, like I said, I did this yesterday and oh man, did the vibes go bad. All right, so I'm gonna stop here and say, let's move on to phase two, just to say, this is where it got us for phase one. What does phase two look like? I will peek under the hood of these. Here we go. I'm gonna let you help me peek under the hood. I will not judge them for any of this being wrong. So we're gonna create a project called librarian. That one worked. Let's create a project called librarian. <laughs> okay, All, I'm so gun shy from yesterday. This is already great, so. Let's open this project first. All right, looking pretty, pretty reasonable. Open this project. I mean, these are great. Do I have to keep going? I'm just nervous. I know you're not nervous with me, but all right. Ah, that looks brilliant. <laughs> also brilliant. Oh, good gosh. How far did these things get? This is amazing. Uh, 
Uh, all right, let me resize these so that we can see. Yeah, these are nodes that you'll be able to move around on a board as expected. Holy mackerel. Okay, um, this is so many steps ahead of what I hit yesterday. This is where I thought I would get. So I'm hugely excited here. I'm gonna stop here because I do know that it has not tied in some of the other moving parts. I mean, do I know that? <laughs> okay, let's, let's put something in here. Okay, all right, I have not gone any further than this. I've just filled in a small elderly female librarian and a little piece of text. And first, let's hit Create Clips. I don't expect it to do anything, but let's give them a shot. <laughs> All right, what, what is going on, Claude? Oh my God. Is anyone else freaking out right now? I did not expect it to get nearly this far. All right, the designs are definitely different, but they're both frankly quite attractive. All right, are we ready? This one's eight seconds long, apparently. Oh, it doesn't play. Okay, that's fair. Doesn't play. Not shocking. And we definitely have an issue. No supported sources. Fine with it. Fine with it. This is so much further than I expected. Let's try on this side. Excellent. Same thing. Okay, so this got us incredibly far. I don't have the variants. That's actually in phase two of the document. So let's go add that so that we can see what the variants work like. But I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually blown away by this. Oh, I can't wait. I gotta go. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna cover really briefly what's inside of this thing. This thing is, i am it's relatively sophisticated, frankly. It's not one moving part that's in here. We've seen some of this already with that mind-blowing first pass of the PRD. It created an endless canvas. There are utilities out there that it's using, so it did not build all of that. It's using open source solutions. They're both using the same intentionally. That was part of my brief. They both put that endless canvas down perfectly. There is a set of LLMs that we'll be using, and that's the variance. We'll see that in the next step. This is this step of, I want to create, I have a voice, so there's just a small elderly librarian, but then I want to be able to, use intelligence to creatively alter the prompt that I'm putting in. That's not a great prompt, obviously. So we would want something that's more descriptive and kind of written in a way that a voice model, which is we're using 11 labs, you'll see this API down here, is an API that allows us to do text to speech. And this, in this case, what we're allowed to do is create unique voices and then do text to speech. So we're really trying to create new characters with this definition. And then there's a document database that's storing all of this stuff so that we can keep it in projects, come back to it. So that's the build. This is not a small set of components to build from just a simple PRD. So I'm excited we got this far. It's time for me to put the second prompt in. Okay. I've put the second prompt in. Let's let this cook for just a minute, see what it can come up with. Uh, they both finished again, which is great. I wanna try the create variants. Let's create a variant off of that. And here's another character. All right, small elderly female librarian, but with exhausted night shift tone, but with heavy French accent. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, so this is just very repetitive. Something's going on, this feels algorithmic. Okay, so, Full disclosure, there's been a lot of back and forth. There's a couple things that were findings out of all of this. Really still a pretty good experience. And uh, like we mentioned, kind of a sophisticated project, but they're both ready. Let's go take a look at what they have for us. All right, here we are. We have Opus on the left. We're gonna create a new project, call it the cowboy. We'll do the same over here. All right, let's move into the cowboy in both cases as before. Excellent looking. So here we are with our initial nodes for each one of these. So let me grab the data that we're gonna to need to put into these. So what we have, if you recall, we can create variants, which is basically a new character. This one, in fact, called it create characters. And if you hit create characters, what it's going to do is it's gonna reach out and talk to two LLMs as we talked about before and create a new set of characters that are related. What we've got is a warm, easygoing male voice with a slight southern drawl on a calm, steady rhythm, mid-range pitch with a touch of gravel like someone who spent years outdoors. So it's kind of a cowboy sound at this point. Um, so I will look into some of these characterizations as well. 
And here you'll see this warm, easygoing male voice retains its slight southern drawl and calm, steady rhythm, but now carries a pronounced Appalachian twang. Okay, that one's interesting. Easygoing male, southern drawl, calm, steady rhythm. Sounds like a man who's seen some things. All right, so these aren't terribly unique. I'm not so sure these are really uh, that creative yet, so that prompt probably needs some work. All right, so let's create some clips for the grandfather and create some clips for our original cowboy over here. So let's start with... Well now, reckon life's like riding a wild horse. You don't get to choose the trail, but you sure as hell decide how long you stay in the saddle. Well now, reckon life's like riding a wild horse. Okay, that one's interesting. I really like this one quite a bit, actually. I could use that one. This one sounds like a cowboy on a telephone telling a story from the old days, basically. That one's kind of interesting. All right, what does this guy over here got? Well, you know, when I was just a young fella, we used to spend every summer out by the old oak tree, watching the stars light up the night sky. Well, you know, when I was just a young fella, we used to spend every summer out by the old oak tree, watching the stars light up the night sky. Okay, I like that one. So this is another one that I like quite a bit. And of course, then you would just start working from here. So we could take this one and say, Space Cowboy. But not just Space Cowboy. Let's create a new one from him and start creating other variations of a Space Cowboy. Rugged Space Cowboy. Well, now, partner. Ain't it a fine sight to see the... No, 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 this is too boring. Out here among the stars, you learn real quick that justice ain't just a word. It's a way of standing tall. Out here among the stars, you learn real quick that justice ain't just a word. Out here among the stars, you... No, 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 no. Okay, so let's see. We got kind of a crazy figure now. Let's see if that helps. Keep your heads low and your mouths shut. You move when I say not a second before. These bots don't miss. And I'm not dragging any more kids back in pieces. Let's go. Awesome. That was really good. Let's try the ones from Sonnet. It doesn't really matter. It's all 11 labs at this point, but it's fun. Keep your heads low and your mouth shut. You move when I say not a second before. These bots don't miss. And I'm not dragging any more kids back in pieces. Let's go. All right. I mean, honestly, that's a success. So there are some nuances here. You will still need to engineer things. So I don't want to paint too rosy a picture that you can just create this cold from a few prompts. But really, honestly, it got super close to creating this really well from just a few prompts. And then the engineering part of it kind of really takes hold. Uh, so I would call this, frankly, a complete success on both of these. Okay, closure here, right? So this one I'm struggling with just a little bit. It was a great experiment to run these side by side. Oh, hold up. One last thing. You just thought we were done. Let's go take a look at this special surprise that I've got for you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You knew I was going to do it. You knew it was happening behind the scenes. I can't fool you anymore. I decided to also do this in Gemini. And I will admit, I did not go nearly as far with Gemini. It got to a success place very quickly, but I never got to the completion of pushing back in multiple times to create the files and a couple other things. Let's take a look. This is the project as Gemini created it. And it it really, this is many times I've done this with Gemini as a comparison between this and Claude Code. And Gemini's design is never as thoughtful. It's very fast. It's probably twice as fast, frankly. And its engineering seems really pretty good, but it just does not create any thoughtful design whatsoever. So if we go into the librarian project here, you can see like it won't save the locations of things. I didn't work my way through that, but you can see many of the other parts so it can create clips. Even though they won't play, I didn't go back and say, use the, the file as a clip. Oh, trying to get to one. Okay, well, let's use this character. If we create a clip, it'll go and create clips. If we create variants, it'll go down and create more variants. So this was Gemini completing very quickly and truly for free. I mean, I can't say enough about free. If you were looking for an outcome of this, I know you weren't expecting Gemini CLI again, and I love 2.5. This is the 2.5 Pro model. So I really do like what it does, 
But honest to gosh, it does not compare to the completion aspect that Gemini is bringing to things. And really the design here to some degree matters. Some of the thoughtfulness of the way the error messages and things like that happen are really pretty well thought out. Even the layout of the screen and what it looks like to start the application, these are pretty obvious things for it just to create a label at the top and a linked list below it is super old school. So it feels like it's meeting the spec rather than kind of using some intelligence to figure out how it can meet the spec creatively. All right, so that's my Gemini comparison. I wanted to share that. You knew it was happening behind the scenes. Success. Okay, and now for the actual uh, kind of conclusion here. What do I think? Is it better? Like full stop, no. It is not better, period. Was it better during development to have Opus? No, it took longer. Sonnet did a fantastic job, finished much faster than Opus, and had far fewer errors, frankly, that it couldn't get out of. In fact, I didn't run into any that it just couldn't get out of. And I think in there is the surprising answer. So agentically, I think all models become far more performant with a good, solid agentic loop. Anything that has an evaluation process and is really thoughtfully utilizing the tools that it has is going to be far more performant than the model itself. And I think that's the answer. What's happening here is Claude Code is the agent loop. What's happening in Claude Code, I believe, is partially inside of Opus. This agentic kind of comparative evaluator that's going on inside of that thinking loop is what Claude Code has built into it so that it can use something simpler like Sonnet. And so Sonnet starts to behave a lot more like Opus. And I think that's why a lot of people that are using this are starting to say, I use Sonnet a lot. I do go into Opus when it's a big problem. Even I have used Opus in a scenario where I thought, wait, this is, this is not solving the problem. Sonnet is going in circles and having the same problem. Let me go up to Opus. And it really has solved the problem. So there is a value to it. It's there. But is it worth $80? I would say no. Is it worth, you know, $180? Definitely, unquestionably no. However, the one thing, and this is the, this is the final takeaway, best thing I can tell you is I think Anthropic has their metering done just right. The way that they limit it per five hour block allows you to bump into your thresholds at a given moment and realize you're getting closer to it and understand that, oh my gosh, in a couple hours, two hours, three hours, I'm going to have to refresh. I have to wait until that time. So I either slow down now or I'm kind of out until that time rather than I'm done until the next day. Or in case, in, in many cases, VO3, I'm looking straight at you. Uh, you're done for the month. Congratulations. You're on day three. You got no more credits. You're out of here. That really sucks. So with that awesome metering that they have, you'll know when you need to upgrade. This is the beautiful part. I think Anthropic built exactly the right set of tools. I mean, we I cannot applaud enough for what they've built. Go get the $20, use Claude Code because it is literally fantastic. $20 absolutely will get you there until you notice that you're being limited. Once you're being limited, you realize, oh, I'm gonna have to move up because I use too much. And that's it. And if you start hitting that limit when you're on the $100 plan, you gotta move up again. So they've really done it exactly right. And it's not really the Opus upsell. The upsell is excellent. It's upsell so that you can get, you know, a little bit more traction on your coding efforts. That's it. That's the takeaway. I know. I think we were all hoping that Sonnet would clobber Opus in some crazy way and we'd all go, oh, we don't need the $200 model. And you really don't. My answer, I guess, is you really don't unless you need it. But you'll know you need it. It's, it's not a surprise. Don't, don't FOMO over it. Get the $20 plan, you'll be perfectly fine. Okay, I hope you got something out of this one. Really, thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.